The Ogallala Aquifer is a large underground aquifer in the High Plains region in the United States. It covers an area roughly of 175,000 square miles across eight states. The states with the largest share of the aquifer are Nebraska, Kansas, and Texas. Contrary to popular belief, an aquifer is not merely an underground pool of water, but is instead underground rock that contains water due to its permeability. We can often gain access to this water by drilling wells. Once water has been taken out of an aquifer, it replenishes itself through a process called recharge. Precipitation, such as rain, travels through the ground, filling spaces in between the permeable rock, such as sandstone or chalk, until it reaches hard rock, in which case it cannot go any further. The Ogallala Aquifer is one of the largest aquifers in the world, with an estimated 3 trillion gallons of water being contained in it. According to a 2014 study conducted by researchers at the Texas A&M University, it's estimated that about 40% of groundwater used for agricultural purposes in the United States comes from this very aquifer. This means that millions of Americans, especially the farmers in the states that the Ogallala Aquifer covers, like Texas and Nebraska, are heavily reliant on the aquifer. Even if you're not a farmer, just living within the Ogallala Aquifer Basin means that you depend on it. Most counties' local economies rely on the agricultural industry to keep afloat. Or you could live in one of the many towns that rely on the aquifer for their water source, especially Cheyenne, which is the capital city of Wyoming. As discussed earlier, aquifers can replenish themselves, however, this process is usually quite slow. This unfortunately means that the Ogallala aquifer is being depleted way quicker than it is being replenished. During the years of 2013 to 2015, water level in the Ogallala aquifer had been reduced by roughly 3 trillion gallons of water. This means at current rates, the whole aquifer could be depleted by the year 2100. This will cause a major disruption to the crops that grow here, as suddenly there won't be enough water for the crops to grow. This will eventually lead to crop failure. This is going to cause a massive ripple effect. First, farmers will not be able to sell crops. This means there is a massive reduction in the supply of corn, wheat, soybeans, etc. This will cause the prices of food that contain those ingredients to rise massively. Meats such as beef, pork, and chicken will also grow up in price, as 40% of the corn grown in the United States is dedicated to feeding livestock. One simple solution, some may say, is to use less water. To use the water they have more effectively so they don't deplete as much. However, this overlooks the technological advancements that farming technology has made already to combat this issue, such as pivot irrigation and irrigation scheduling. Not to mention how hard this would be to regulate. Farmers simply just get their water from the ground with no middleman involved. Take for example this farm in Ockeltree County, Texas, which as you can see is in an area with a big decline in the water level. This farm almost exclusively grows wheat, however they also do have some livestock. And this is their main source of water. It may just look like a small windmill, however this is actually known as a windmill pump. It takes advantage of the large amount of wind in the flat plains of Texas to pump water from the aquifer up to the surface. This water is then used for irrigation of the crops. So if using less water from the aquifer is not an option, what other solutions are there? One solution being thrown out is to change the crops being used from ones that use less water. Right now, the three main crops being grown in the Great Plains are wheat, corn, and soybeans. Some water-efficient crops that could be grown in the Great Plains are tomatoes, squash, and rhubarb. However, many see this as infeasible. Demand for these crops will never go down, and the infrastructure has already been built specifically for these three staple crops. On top of that, wheat, corn, and soybeans are some of the most profitable crops to grow because of how easy they are to grow, maintain, and harvest. Another idea circulating around is to just eat less beef. There are 28.2 million beef cows in the United States, which equates to about 12 cows per person in America. Cows do consume more water than humans, so by reducing the amount of cows in the Great Plains, this could help greatly reduce the water usage in the Ogallala Aquifer. 
However, this also faces the same problem with water efficient crops. Beef will continue to grow in demand and many Americans are not willing to give up meat in their diet. The most popular idea to solve this crisis is water diversion. Somehow, water from an external source is going to somehow be transported all the way to the Great Plains so that farming at its current rate is still sustainable. One way this could be done is by collecting water from the ocean, most likely from the Gulf of Mexico, and then desalinating it. Then they would have to figure out how water would get to the Great Plains, most likely through aqueducts. While this process may be a great idea in a state like California, which is already a coastal state, the Great Plains is in the middle of the country, meaning water would have to travel much further. This would be unimaginably expensive and would take years and possibly decades to construct. Another water source and what seems to be the most popular solution among the general population is to get water from the Great Lakes. The Great Lakes are the largest group of freshwater lakes by area and the second by volume. Due to the fact that the water is already clean, this would save a lot of money on having to build a desalination plant and we would be able to allocate a bigger budget in building the aqueducts. In conclusion, despite the fact that this is a very serious problem that needs to be addressed a lot more than it currently is, it seems to be that the general public just doesn't care. Perhaps because an emptying aquifer is a lot less alarming than other water-related problems such as shrinking reservoirs. Or perhaps it's due to the lack of good solutions and people have just put this on the back burner to deal with in the future. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this video and most importantly, I hope you learned something today. Thank you for watching, goodbye.